practice, how much have you been able to get outside and use the, the new field? We've been outside, I think, the last five days in a row, which is, you know, last year we didn't get out, not the first time. So I'm a little bit guilty of getting them out there on days where it's, uh, the weather's not really conducive to being outside, but uh, to be able to see a fly ball with the sky in the background and uh, face a pitcher with the pine trees in the background, it's worth its weight in gold. So if there's a chance, uh, we're getting out there and, we have a saying in our program, the worse the weather, you know, the advantage Mountaineers because we we got to play in it, so we're going to practice in it as much as we can. Three players in the mix for middle infield. How's the progression on that? It's pretty good. They're, they're all playing really, really well right now, to be honest with you, which is a, a good problem to have. But at the same time, you know, we're going to have two freshmen, looks like, in the middle infield. So uh, freshmen are freshmen, and, and they make mistakes, and we're going to have to – live with some of those mistakes, but uh, those three guys over their career here, because we're going to play them a lot as freshmen probably, are, are going to be really, really good players before they leave here. How important was it is the continuity of the starting rotation this year? You know, it's always important to, uh, to know, uh, even from a position player standpoint, when you show up to the yard that your name's on a lineup card and, and the starting pitchers know what day they're throwing. and and know how to do their routine in between starts. So if we can keep those three starters, the same three starters the whole season, that, that makes everybody better. So, But you never know. we got so many quality guys this year. we got a, uh, a lot deeper bullpen than we've had in the past. Uh, so there's going to be guys pushing those starters all the time. So I don't think we're in a situation now where we have to extend those guys uh, as much as we have in the past. Uh, you know, last year we were you know, when Chad would pitch, Donato would pitch. Uh, Chad Donato, when he got a little bit tired in the sixth or seventh inning, a lot of times was still better than one of the fresh guys that was coming out of the pen. And, and I think we've got a lot more guys to choose from now in the bullpen that, that can come in and, and uh, get us out of some, some trouble if we get into it. How's Caleb Potter's uh, fielding? <clears throat> Caleb's getting better. He's an unbelievable worker. He's a great kid, and and just like anybody in the outfield, he benefits from getting out there and seeing fly balls coming out of the sky. You know, because we don't. Uh, last year we didn't have that luxury, so he went into his freshman season without seeing a, a fly ball fly in the springtime, other than in the indoor facility. So uh, he's getting better every day out there, and that's a tribute to his work ethic. And the change in the offensive approach that you mentioned earlier. How much do you have to work with individual hitters to you know, maybe tailor them a little bit more to what you want to get out of that? Is it major changes, minor tweaks? Not really. It's more of a philosophical thing that guys buy into the system that we're trying to do and put some pressure on the defense now. Uh, it, it's funny, though, that when we play these spring inner squads, you don't, we don't really play that way in the inner squads because we, uh, going into the season, you want to see who can hit, you know, so you don't want to take the bat out of their hand by giving a guy a bunt or a hit and run. Just want to see who can hit first. And then uh, once you get the lineup set, then we can play our style of baseball. And you know, like we talked about the Texas Tech series last year when, when we came out just really forcing the action, uh, really helped us win games. So uh, I think we're going to do a lot more of that this year. Our lineup is more conducive to that. We got guys at the top and the bottom that can run a little bit, can handle the bat a little bit. Uh, we're not going to have the same amount of power probably this year as we've had in the past. So uh, it's a lot more fun to coach that way. And, and uh, when it's working, it's a lot more fun to play that way because guys are always moving and, and hustling around and doing good things. So uh, I'm kind of looking forward to how that plays out. Coach, what do you think of the non-conference portion of your schedule coming up here? And, um, you know, obviously playing on the road for the first month or so this season because of the, the chilly temperatures here. Yeah, you know, it's uh, – uh, I, I always believe that playing college baseball is about an experience. It's not just about uh, hitting curveballs and fielding backhands. And uh, for what these guys have experienced so far this year, uh, you know, we had Pete Rose talk to the team last week. You know, who who gets to do that? You know, so uh, that that's a memory these guys will have for a long time. And and uh, we get to go to Las Vegas and then play the Diamondbacks and go to Hawaii and and that's. That's stuff that these guys will remember the rest of their lives. But at the same time, uh, this isn't a vacation. You know, we're we're going to win games, and to me, 
when you go on trips like that, uh, you want your team to look around and say, man, this would be a nice place to come back to one day and, and really enjoy it. But we're there to win games because that's, uh, that's what's going to get us to where we need to be. So, but it's, uh, we do the same thing with summer ball. When we send guys out to play summer ball, we try and send them to different parts of the country just to add to their whole uh, college experience. And I think the fact that you know, the stuff we do in our program, it's more than just baseball. And, and it's, it's a really, really enjoyable uh, four years of their life. How unique is it for a college team to play a Major League Baseball team? Does that ha happen all that often? Yeah, there's some teams out there to do it. I know, I think Georgia and Georgia Tech play the Braves every year, and I think the Yankees go down and play somebody every year down in their spring training facility. But uh, we haven't done it. But it's uh, it's going to be neat for our kids to look across the field in the other dugout and and see the guys who are not only in the big leagues, fighting to be in the big leagues, and. You know, it's amazing when you step on the field with those guys sometimes after the game's over, I'm sure our pitchers will say, man, I'm just as good as that guy. And, you know, our hitters will be the same way. And, and hopefully they'll understand, our guys will understand, it's such a fine line between uh, where we are and where they are. So, uh, but it's a, it's a long road to get there. But, uh, you know, that'll be, that'll be really cool for our kids to, uh, uh, to play that game. Talked in the past years about using the non conference schedule to figure out who you are, and mentioned that a little bit before. Is it tough to balance that, though, with the idea that you've got to get wins with RPI and trying to make the NCAA tournament? How do you balance that? I mean, I know you don't want to give away a game, but you know, are there times where you've got to say, I've got to get this guy in here to see what he does? Yeah, there's no doubt. That's the, that's the hardest part from my standpoint because you want to try and get everybody in the lineup early in the year to figure out your best team when you start conference play. And, but at the same time, I'll never forget my first year, we, uh, we played somebody else at first base uh, in place of Ryan McBroom. You know, if McBroom ever gets hurt, you know, who, who in the world is going to play first base? So we took Broom out of the lineup, played somebody else at first base, and uh, we lost the game. And we got Ryan McBroom sitting on the bench watching us lose the game. And you're thinking, oh, well, I'll never do that again, you know? Uh, so we, we literally, we have to win every game. We, we, we can't afford to, to give a game away, so uh, we got to put our best players in the, uh, in the lineup every game. But if, if, if you never put the guys that aren't in the starting lineup in the game, uh, if you have an injury late in the year, then, then you got a guy coming off the bench that hasn't played in 15 games. So that's a real balancing act. But fortunately on this team, I think the guys that aren't in the starting lineup in the first game are still good enough uh, for us to win the game. So that's a good feeling as a coach to have that much depth on both sides of the ball. You mentioned some of the young guys in the infield earlier. Where is Jimmy Galuski in his progression, and what are your expectations of him this year? Uh, Jimmy played great today. Played really good defense, had a couple hits. He's as much fun to watch play as anybody. He's on and off the field uh, as fast as he can go. He's got great energy, uh, great attitude. He, over time, is going to develop, I think, into a really, really good player. But he's a freshman, and he hasn't faced Big 12 pitch in his entire life. Uh, so it's going to be a learning curve for Jimmy. But uh, uh, like I said, he's a really, really good player. He, he brings a lot to the team. Uh, and you don't have to be a great hitter to be a great offensive player and help the team win. And I think Jimmy can do some things to, to help us win games. So. Uh, it's going to be fun to watch him play, and I know it's going to be great for the, for the community and the people in the state of West Virginia to see him play because he's a local guy. and He's just he's really, really made the most out of his ability, and he's a lot bigger and stronger uh, right now than he was last year. And you know, Jimmy redshirted last year, but we took him on every trip to give him the experience of taking ground balls at Texas and, and at Oklahoma State and places like that. So. Even though he's got no playing experience, he's got experience of being in those venues. So that was the idea of taking him on all those trips. How important is it that you guys have had a full year off season to be able to practice at that new field? And does it kind of create a home field advantage here? You know, I hope so. That was the thing last year. There was so much hype uh, with that stadium, surrounding the stadium and the uh, opening day. And then it got delayed. And, you know, we really came out of the gates playing really well last year. I think we were 22 and 11 at one point. And then we got into the stadium. It's like, man, wait till we get there. Wait till we get there. And 
once we got in there, we didn't play as well. And, and I think now the fact that we've had all fall to practice in there and all spring to practice in there, and now we've got a locker room that we didn't have last year and, and a place to go after batting practice and get off our feet a little bit and prepare for the game. And we have our team meals up there now. The schedule and the comfort level is way more conducive to that being a home field advantage. And uh, we really loaded the schedule with home games. We got 30 home games this year. So, so hopefully, you know, when people come into to that ballpark, it's going to be a tough place for them to play. And, you know, the advantage of Holly Field was people get off the bus and take a look at Holly Field and want to get right back on the bus, you know. It was, it was really hard to play well at Holly Field for, as a visiting team. But, but now they get off the bus and look at our stadium, and, and they get as excited to play in there as we do sometimes. So uh, it's not that we played all that bad in there, but the other teams played pretty well against us, you know. So, so hopefully, uh, you know, having, a, like I said, a fall and a spring in there and, and having uh, much more of a comfort level will really help us. <laughs>